for thousands of years, humans in the western U.S. used obsidian, a natural volcanic glass, for knives, spear points, and arrowheads. In this video, I'll show you how to chip this obsidian flake into a razor-sharp desert side-notched arrowhead. Now these two corners here are protruding out. They are quite thin, and I don't want to break those off. So the first thing I'm going to do is chip into them a little bit. Round them off so they're not so prominent and have less chance of breaking them off. That's better. Now they won't be so likely to break off. The other problem is this other side has a flat square edge. So I can do two different things with this. It's actually angled slightly, so I can flake off of that, press flakes off on the bottom side. Wasn't being so effective with that last technique, so I've decided to zigzag that edge off. You can see. Just keep taking successive flakes off one side, flip it over, use that as a platform for the next one. Now we've got a much more user friendly edge that we can set up platforms and press flakes off. Got a bit of a square edge on this other side as well. So I want to, oh, you want to join me, buddy? I don't think so. Damn mosquitoes, I hate them. Just rubbing that edge now, taking off short, steep flakes, working into the stone to thicken it up a little bit. Whenever you're making arrowheads, I always like to Thin out the thickest portions first, aim for those areas, send flakes into that, and then even the thickness out so that you get a much more even preform. Lightly grinding that edge, not too heavy. Got that edge dulled though. Now I'm going to do more of an inward motion, an in and down pressure. Takes that flake off the bottom side. See how those flakes are traveling all the way across the surface. Get your platform set up like that. It doesn't take much pressure to take those flakes off. I mean, I'm really not pressing that hard, but look how they're how far they're traveling, two-thirds across that face. Okay, we've sent them across that side, then we'll come from this other side and send some over to meet those. Picking that up, edge up just a little bit. Like grinding, and do the same thing. I'm going to start from the what'll be the tip of the point, in and down. Setting up platforms like this minimizes the amount of force you have to use for the flake to come off. The less force you have to use, the less chance you have of breaking the point. So that's the whole reason why you want to set your edges up correctly. I've taken those flakes off that one side, so what I'll do to set the edge up the other way is crush that edge essentially. I'm shearing it off with my tool. Very straight up and down motion. I'm not pushing in. Notice I'm 
taking off very short, steep flakes. And I'll do it to the other side as well. Light grinding. Essentially, that's all you do, and you just, if your edges aren't right, you just set them up so they are, and just keep repeating your flaking technique. Adjusting your angles for, and your edge setup for how, how you want the flake to come off. You want a short one or a long one. These are going to be fairly long, so I'm going to press in. Now that one didn't work so well. That edge was a little bit, a little bit too sharp and weak. So... Before I go any further, I'm going to grind that down a bit more and make it a little stout. Go next to it, inward and downward motion. There we go, that looks much better. And then just go right down the line, pressing flakes off. Now come back from the other side, same thing. It pops like that. That's a, an audible indication that your your platform preparation is correct because you're able to build up the pressure and then the flake will suddenly release. So it's, it's flattened out quite a bit with just this few series of flakes. All we have to do is narrow the preform up now. Now this base, the basal edge, is still a square edge, it's still flattened. Can't use that as is, so we'll do the same zigzag technique that we used before. I'm getting to the point now that I don't want to keep using this dull flaker. It's real easy to break that point. So I'm going to switch to a much sharper flaker, more precise point, concentrate my force so I can continue to refine and sharpen that point. To notch this point, I'm actually going to use this flat split deer leg bone. So it was split in half and then filed down to a flat popsicle stick shape. That'll allow me to get in there and create those nice, narrow, but deep notches. When beginning the notch, carefully crunch into the edge, creating a small localized bevel. Then, flip the point over and press off a small flake with in and down pressure. Repeat the process until the notch reaches the desired depth. Now this notching is where most people have trouble. And sometimes I have problems still too, just because you 
you don't have much room for error. You don't have a way out if your notch gets too thick in there and you get stuck. So it's important to set your edges up correctly. Build that platform edge up and then press the flake off. Making sure that edge, you know, rub that and making sure that edge is dull in there so that when I press on it, flake will come off cleanly. Each flake removal will thin that edge out, set you up for the next one. I'm going to narrow these little ears on this base. So there's the finished desert side notch point. Really didn't take that long either, just strategic flake removals and chip the notches and she's finished. It's a little bit bigger than the ones you find out in the Great Basin. They tend to be quite small. But, boy, this thing is sharp. It'll do the job. Really sharp, serrated edges. It just, when you rub it on your upper lip, you can just feel it. It just wants to cut. And that's what they were using out there in the Great Basin to hunt mule deer, bighorn sheep, and even elk. <laughs>